Thanks for staying with us. Now, technology affects the way individuals communicate, learn, and think. It helps society and determines how people interact with each other on a daily basis. The internet and cell phones are some examples. One aspect of technology that has had a great impact on society is how it affects learning. It's made learning more interactive, collaborative, and this helps people better engage with the material that they are learning and have trouble with. Also, it gets you better access to resources. With creation of the internet, it gives us access to information at a 24-hour rate and you have access to almost anything online. So, I can comfortably say we have no excuse to fail with technology. Now remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. So ladies, when I saw this um, conversation um, about technology and you know third world, and I'm wondering, like, okay, like you rightly said, um, AK, before um, we, we started the show, when we, when we talked about, um, when you said COVID brought an opportunity, you know, it brought a, a lot of opportunities that we never saw possible when we're having the conversation about businesses and how they've integrated technology. People that thought they could never, you know, use Facebook or WhatsApp or whatever, everybody is now online. I mean, I was talking to a friend of mine. Um, she's our brand um, um, promoter, Hegan Esther, that supplies our brand. She was saying that, oh, if you are not on Instagram and you're selling beauty products, you are not in business. You know, so technology has come Instagram to say. Instagram and Pinterest. <laughs> you know, so what's your take on, on technology and for us as Africans or a third world country? Well, I would say that the world is looking to Africa actually for the next big thing to happen because our youth population is growing at an alarming rate mm -hmm. and will probably triple by 2030. Now, my, my take is, will we be able to leapfrog? And by that, I mean, stand on the shoulders of people that are already gone. Would we be able to do that? Because if we mm -hmm. do that, I see us transcending some of the issues that we have now. So why take, for example, when you're looking at um, things like ghost walkers, mm -hmm. imagine you have mm -hmm. a unique identity, um, identification. So the paperwork the is totally reduced. So mm -hmm. every day you go to work, you clock in. Hmm. And, I, and I think that our government knows that most of the problems, they will solve it with technology. But will corruption allow us to be great? Is it, <laughs> no, because we need Valid to answer question. that question. Will corruption allow us to be great? Because you do things and then you would hear that there's sabotage. Mm. For example, because if we are, you know, um, if we have adopted technology, if you like, like the AG's office born one million times, it's you're got sure that the records are in the cloud. Yes. So are we able, will we allow ourselves to adopt technology such a way that it will push us forward, not just in um, giving better life, but in things like financial inclusion. Mm. And I was talking to Sanzi and saying that the strategy and the... Um, um, the strategy for the Indian government also included mm -hmm. financial inclusion. And where does financial inclusion ride on? Technology. Sure. We can't build banks in every village. We can't build a financial institution in every mm -hmm. village. But every person in every village Has can a have a mobile phone. phone. Mm. Right. And they can vote. So if you want to think of the possibilities, what you can even do with your BVN number. Mm. Imagine we all have BVN numbers mm -hmm. and we all can be identified. Things like all these election malpractices. It's a thing I love. Quickly, Sansi. Well, I must say that it feels like in entertainment, oh, uh, there is also, also the side of it. Like with the number of Nigeria, <laughs> a lot of Nigerians have not adopted this uh, technology when it comes to banking. But a couple of us that have adopted it, you spend more. Can we just be honest? Yes, and the businesses are happy, but you can then track yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, for an en entertainment sector, I think entertainment is one industry that has completely embraced, um, Technology. well, largely embraced it, especially during this COVID era, because right now, um, for actresses and actors, most castings are done um, online. So it's kind of like you submit, and this is something that we've been craving for. Like, you don't have to gather hundred, uh, hundreds because or it's thousands of people. And they spend the entire day queuing up to audition. So just sending your mail, the current ongoing Big Brother, that was how they did um, their casting. However, the field I'm not so sure that is benefiting from this, this is the music industry. I was running a research on um, 
music in the US. And I think as of 2009, their live stream was like 9% and downloads was like 39%. They were making more money from physical mm -hmm. sales. Right now, their, their, their live stream is like their major source of income. That's like 70, 78%. Wow. Well, that's not the same in Nigeria because in Nigeria, our artists are still struggling. Mm. You know, so Do we um, really download music. We tip from we the people. Don't, <laughs> We, we, we don't yes we people make money off of youtube mm. but in downloads no we don't we yeah, always look I for like I the agree, shortcut I agree yeah. shortcut angles i yeah. agree with right, that well, <laughs> i think for me it's um it's um it's fine so let's uh, probably bring in our guests okay um john obidi okay. is an entrepreneur consultant speaker author and founder head start africa in a population of about 180 million people, John Obidi was listed as one of the most influential Nigerians in personal development and academia in 2017 and 2018 by Advanced, Ad, Advanced Media. Now, he's a social media strategist, online business consultant, and the founder of Head Start Africa, a 140,000 members strong community of experts and thought leaders. So good evening, John Obidi. Oh, okay. I think he's coming. <laughs> yeah, well, so for me, I think um, basically, right, if we want to look at corruption as a subject, because mm -hmm. I want us to go back to corruption, because <laughs> I know John might not want to touch on political things. I know that what you rightly said about BVN, I can sit in my home. I don't have to even go anywhere anymore. From the comfort, my comfort zone, I just vote with my BVN. So you can verify that I'm a human being and this is my yeah. credential. So I keep, because it keeps bothering me why we have to go back every four years, right? For some of us to go revalidate. All that stress. You, know, so you have to revalidate something that they say is already in their, is in their data, like they have it in their data. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, do you know how many, gets burnt. <laughs> do you know how, how many, do you want the people printing the paper, the people uh, printing the cards, the contract, how do you want them to make the money? <laughs> if you they give you an everlasting one that does not expire. You know, well, that's a valid argument. <laughs> and a, a, a lot of people have that argument that when we embrace technology, most people will be um, jobless. Out of Take, jobs. for instance, people who print all this. No, um, what I'm saying is that it's not necessary. Sandy gets sellers. me. It's not necessary. She was I, was, I was being sarcastic. Oh, okay. I was being sarcastic <laughs> because you don't, need, you don't need that to happen. And, mm. you know, I'm, well, I don't have proof, but if you speculate, you would see that a lot of money, this 81 billion, that is where it is going now. So somebody will tell you that we're sending messages because to Because you COVID see, every patients. year, they keep coming up with budgets. I, never, I mean, I, I never come back with the, another budget that they have to do. The, there are some things that if we just embrace technology, all those costs will be completely eradicated. So you just upload everything on the data file. The way people, millions of people are voting on Big Brother, they can actually vote for our elections. One all right, so I think we have John with us now. Okay. Thanks for joining us this evening, John. Thanks for having me, Oa. All right, so we lost you there for a minute. So um, quickly, how have you been, though? We've not seen, we've not seen this I've year. Been, See, thanks to COVID. I've, I've been good. I've been good. This is our season. We that live on the online. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's why we, we thought of no better guests than, than you to bring on the show. So, but John, how Thank prepared you. are we, you know, for technology in Africa? How prepared are we? Well... That's a double-edged question. I think that we have really improved. And when I say Africa, I'll just speak for Nigeria because uh, th th that's where I, I'm at. And um, things are a lot better now than they were like 10 years ago. Um, the cost of accessing internet connectivity has reduced. It can get better, but has reduced. And as a matter of fact, I think that Na the, the cost of accessing mobile data in Nigeria is one of the cheapest in the world. Many people do not know that. Uh, so it, things are really getting better regarding that. And not just that, but we're able to access richer forms of media. So we can do a lot of live streaming. We can access uh, YouTube videos. We can upload YouTube videos. So I think that now more than ever, the Nigerian ecosystem is more empowered to be, con to be creators and producers on the internet and not just consumers like we were limited to a couple of years ago. I mean, back in the day, we could only access maybe blogs or Wikipedia because we're limited to 2G or Edge data. But now there's 4G, there's LTE, and I think things are really getting better. 
Okay, so I was, I was going to ask a question. Um, earlier on, before you joined us, we talked about um, the impact that financial inclusion can, can have in terms of um, if we get a lot of people to, to access financial services. What I want to ask is that are there policies that actually facilitate digitalization or actually drive technology in Nigeria? Well, I think from the policy angle, we have those things, but one of our biggest issues, which I hope would get solved as a matter of urgency, is uh, the matter of infrastructure. So even though on one hand, I said that the cost of mobile data in Nigeria is, is the cheapest, is one of the cheapest in, in the world, but that has, still not be, that has still not penetrated most of Nigeria. And so we, we, so comparatively, we're still spending more, even though mobile data is the cheapest, but we don't have as much like unlimited data. So even though we, we say things like financial inclusion, all the policies might, might, might be there, but if the infrastructure is not there, we have a lot of people who are left behind. Well, there's a lot of people in the rural areas who can't access these services. Um, I mean, Facebook launched something called Free Basics in collaboration with one of the telcos, but there's still that issue of infrastructure. So what many of us, especially those of us in the cities, are having to do is to invest in our own personal infrastructure. So those of us in the big cities like Lagos and Abuja, we can talk about how much we are using the financial services, but when you compare that to the broader population of Nigeria, it still leaves so much to be desired. So even though policy is being worked on, I think that as a matter of urgency, we need to work on infrastructure. I think that's where Nigerians have been largely left behind. Very few Nigerians can boost up unlimited internet access and at a price that can really get more people on board. I think that is where a lot of focus should be on. All right, so um, earlier when we were having our little conversation before you joined us, AK mentioned um, something that was a little sarcastic, but I just figured that I think it's a relevant question that I, I should ask you. Now, how do we deal with people who are obviously going to be rendered jobless the more we embrace technology? That's a very valid question. When we talk about the robots taking people's jobs and artificial intelligence and all that, some people get um, scared. But you see, it's the same thing with the guy who bought a thousand horses just before the car was invented, hmm. right? So pro progress, is going to, progress is going to come whether we like it or not. And so rather than get afraid or cynical about it, it's best that we position ourselves on the right side of history. So what we need to do is look at, okay, jobs. some jobs will go, but what are the new jobs that are being created and how can we position ourselves to be producers of these new jobs or to be contributors in these new industries that are being formed? So maybe human jobs, manual jobs are being lost. What are those jobs going to be replaced by? Software. That, all that software is going to need human beings to operate them, to understand them, to program them. And so even though some jobs are, are going, some jobs are being opened up some jobs have been introduced into the ecosystem and that's where we need to focus where the op the opportunity is at now a lot of nigerians are still in the old way of doing things and naturally more would be skeptical of change but change is going to come whether we like it or not so we need to look at the, where the jobs are where the jobs are coming and position ourselves right there now so there are all these buzzwords that are coming out like artificial intelligence augmented reality virtual reality um, we're even seeing such a, 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 an influx of Nigerians on live streaming technologies. Nowadays, you can't go to Instagram and not see a lot of people streaming live. There are so many things people are doing. People are now selling their products online. Those who are limited to brick and mortar stores are now creating online stores. Everybody is online now, and I think this is actually the best time to be alive. There's a lot of knowledge, a lot of information that can help to usher people who are in the old way of doing things into the new world because the new world is here. And the best we can do is to learn how to coexist in this new world. Okay, so I'm so happy that you brought us to learning how to coexist. So when COVID happened, John, everybody, this one is going live with this one. That one is going <laughs> live with this one. At some point, yes. it became almost irritating. I had to like shut all the notifications because as, as far as I'm concerned, everybody's just rushing into the, oh, I'm going live with this, I'm going live with that. Are we getting it right? Because I know you are making a lot of money. You've been online since we came and we have come to meet you, <laughs> you know? So um, 
I just want you to give us like, a, a, like an advice to young people that really want to go into this space to say, you know what, I want to leverage on this technology and grow my income, grow my business. What's the best way to do it? Should we go with the flow of everybody going live, everybody opening, a, you know, Facebook um, live, this one live, all that live, or there is a particular strategy that you have to go with? All right, so first of all, I want to say that this is not a new thing all over the world. This, what is happening in Nigeria now, people going live and embracing the online world, is not exactly a new thing. It's been happening all over the world. It's just that it became new to us here because of COVID, yeah. right? So like you said, a lot of people are going live, but not everybody needs to be live. There are some people whose businesses depend on going live. For example, my business has always depended on congregating large numbers of people. I'm a public speaker. I'm a teacher. I'm a trainer. I need to gather people in a room and give them value and get value in exchange. That's how my industry has operated. So for me, it makes sense to congregate people online in the same way that I was doing it offline. And that makes so much sense for me because, you know, just a couple of months ago, I held one of the largest virtual summits in Africa, the um, Head Start Summit. And we had over 50,000 people registered. On some of these sessions, we had about 3,000 people viewing live. Now, I have never congregated an offline event where I had 3,000 people seated in the, in the, in the audience. Hmm. But that was made possible because we were streaming live. 3,000 people. I tried to imagine what that would look like in real life. It is crazy in a good way. Hmm. So that's the opportunity that that has opened up in my industry. Now, imagine me selling products to all those 3,000 people. Just imagine that. Mm. And we don't have to come together. Nobody has to pay transport fare to come to a hall. You can be in, in Yobe, you can be in Bayelsa, you can be in Lagos. Everybody could congregate on this digital space. That's what people like me have been working with. Now, there are some people who, they don't play in the, in the knowledge space. They're not teaching, they're not congregating people. Maybe they were, they were in, in, into brick and mortar. Now, they are going to have to learn a different set of skills. For example, you expected people to just walk into your store before, but now you can't do it that way. You have to put up an online store and get all these people online to walk into that online store. So we have technologies like Facebook advertising, YouTube advertising, Google advertising. So to answer that question, people that need to be live are those that have been doing presentations before, those whose businesses rely on presentations. Mm. Maybe you have to do seminars, you have to do workshops, um, or you have to do conferences. You can take these things online. There are so many fantastic tools. There's Zoom, there's YouTube Live, there's Facebook Live, there's maybe Instagram Live. Even though Instagram, Instagram Live is a bit weak on, on, on those features, but that exists. For the brick and mortar people, you can set up online stores. We have technologies like Shopify, Flutterwave, and uh, Paystack. They are creating all these solutions to bring these people on board. And these solutions for people who have online stores did not exist pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. So even all these companies are being nimble in their approach and quickly innovating to get people to adapt. Mm -hmm. So anybody now, without being too techy, can set up an online store just like that on Shopify or on Flutterwave or on Paystack and start receiving money. Mm. At least even though people are not moving about that much, these patriarchs are still moving around. So with your brick and mortar store, you can be at home and still be in business. So there's something for everybody, but mm. people need to be willing to learn. There's one quote I want to um, end this particular um, question with, and it is that, I think it was made by my, um, a woman named um, Marie Forleo. She said, uh, regarding technology, it is not your aptitude that counts, mm. but your attitude. Hmm. I'll say that again. It's not your aptitude. Because I'm going to say, oh, I'm not a techie person. It's not about being techie. It's not your aptitude that matters, but your attitude. You've got to have this can-do attitude. All right, this is our lives now. Our what reality. do we need to do to get them? Awesome. Awesome. I think that's, wow. a, that's a good way to sum up this segment. <laughs> we'll go on a short break and we'll still have John Obidi with us. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.